Hello, as mentioned, my name is Hyunwoo Lee, a PhD student from Seoul National University. This work is worked, jointly worked uh, with Seoul National University, University of Luxembourg, and Rochester Institute of Technology. I'd like to start by looking at middle boxes in the TLS session. So, what are middle boxes? Middle boxes, such as web application firewalls, security gateways, and parent controls, are located in between the client and the server to perform their functionality. However, uh, the middle box cannot work uh, with TLS because all the messages are encrypted in between the client and server. So to enable their functions, a common approach is the TLS intersection schemes called split TLS uh, by using the private key sharing or custom load certificates. Before, <coughs> before explaining about those two schemes briefly, note that I will use uh, I will refer to the final session between the client and server, the session that is composed of several segments. The private key sharing is generally used by server-side mailboxes such as web application firewall. And initially, the server transfers its own private key and root certificates. And when a client initiates a TLS handshake, a middle box initiates another TLS handshake with the server and uh, sends the certificate taken from the server to the client. The session is finally established between the client and server, but while the client believes they have established a TLS session with server, not middle box. The other approach, the middle box split the TLS session, is by using custom root certificates. Middle box previously installs the custom root certificate into the client's trusted root certificate store. Then, when a client initiates a TRS handshake, the middle box also initiates another TRS handshake. And at the same time, a middle box generates its first certificate with the name of alice.com and sends it for authentication to client. The session is finally established, but note that the client uh, does not know the existence of a middle box. Unfortunately, a lot of security drawbacks regarding split TLS reported because the client has no information about security of segments in this after the immediate mid segment middle box. So let's see the problems in more detail in terms of authentication, confidentiality, and integrity. Regarding authentication, the client does not directly authenticate the server. So many papers report that the, some middle boxes fail to validate the certificates. For example, there can be a case that a middle box receives an expired certificate, but the middle box generates not expired for the certificate, which makes the client believe the session is secure. Regarding confidentiality, even if the weak algorithms such as RC4 or SHA-1 hash algorithms are used after the middle box, the client still believes the session is secure if the strong cipher suit is used in the blue segment. So regarding integrity, uh, when the server sends the original message, the middle box can uh, modify it to the orange document uh, with an unwanted script. But the client still believes uh, the received message is from the server without any modification. So we propose an MATLS, a short for middle box aware TLS, aims to establish a secure session with middle boxes as well as overcoming the challenges in split TLS. For authentication, because client can't authenticate the server in split TLS, we propose explicit authentication in which the client confirms and validates all the certificates in the session, as well as the middle boxes. And for confidentiality, because client cannot know the secret level of the session, we propose a security parameter verification in which the client confirms all the security information in the session. And finally, for integrity, we devise valid modification checks uh, in which the client confirms all the information of modification 
from all the entities uh, based on the edge max. So this, these three mechanisms uh, assumes uh, the client is aware of the middle boxes involved in the session. To this end, we make middle boxes visible. We, <coughs> sorry, we define the notion of auditable middle boxes as middle boxes that have their own middle box certificates logged in the middle box transparency low server. The CA issues a middle box certificate including the, including the information of, about the middle boxes such as type of service, URL to the middle box vendors, and permission of the middle box. So the CA of finally gives the middle box certificate to the middle boxes while logging it into the middle box transparency log server. So what are the benefits of the auditable middle boxes? So the first is no impersonation. So middle boxes now have their own key pairs and do not need to impersonate others, such as in TLS. Second, awareness. Because the certificates are public and static, so anyone that received the certificate can know how uh, the name and properties of the middle box from its middle box certificate. Third, auditability. Because all the middle box certificates are logged in the middle box transparency system, so any interested parties can check for fraudulent certificates using the middle box transparency system. Lastly, revocability. Uh, because now the middle boxes are abstracted with the middle box certificates, and the certificate revocation mechanisms can be used to block any incorrect <coughs> middle boxes. Now let's move on to the MHLS. So the security goals of MHLS uh, has the seven security goals, and regarding authentication, we said uh, the client should be able to authenticate the server and as well as the middle boxes by the explicit authentication mechanism. So in explicit authentication mechanism, so the client validate all the certificates, including the server as well as the middle boxes, and finally without any impersonation. So regarding confidentiality, we set the segment secrecy, one of the security goals, meaning that all the segments should be encrypted with the high, sufficiently high level of TLS and the strong cipher suit. Furthermore, we re <coughs> require all the segments should be encrypted with different segment keys to avoid key reusing the key stream um, with different messages by modification. We call this feature individual secrets. And these two goals are achieved by security parameter verification. So for security par parameter verification, each entity describes information about its related segments, including selected TRS versions, as well as cipher suit, and a transcript of handshake and hash values of master secrets. <coughs> so by this information, the client can confirm no low TLS versions and weak cipher suits are used in their session. With the transcript, the client can confirm two entities in the segment, establish the segment key, and with different hash values of the master secrets, the client can confirm and the different keys are established in these different segments. So now let's move on to integrity. So the first goal is data source authentication. Uh, which is a feature that a client should be able to confirm that a received message has originated from a valid endpoint, such as a server or web cache. And the fifth goal is modification accountability, in which that a client should be able to understand which middle boxes have made each modification to the message. Finally, the message should be passed through the middle boxes in the established order to avoid any side effect. This goal is called pass integrity, and they are achieved by valid modification checks. So in valid modification checks, uh, all the entities generate it, a modification log block, including its own HMAC of the input and output messages. The, we call HMAC keys accountability keys and a series of HMACs supported by the middle boxes of modification log. Now, the client can confirm 
who sent the messages and who modified the message to detect unauthorized data source and unauthorized writers. So and since HMACs are appended following the order of the middle boxes, the client can confirm whether the message has passed through the established order. So now I summarized the three audit mechanisms again. So explicit authentication aims to achieve server authentication as well as middle box authentication with the help of a series of certificates. And the security parameter verifications achieves the segment secrecy and individual secrecy with the security information blocks, including some security information. And the valid modification checks achieves a data source authentication, modification accountability, and pass integrity with the modification log blocks. So to sum up, we build the MATRS handshake, including the three audit mechanisms. So in the first client hello and server hello messages, which are used to negotiate the security parameters, first of all, the usage of the MATRS protocol is negotiated across the old entities. And each segment negotiates its TLS version and cipher suit. And each entity establishes HMAC keys as well. And in the certificate messages, all the message certificates are appended to the prior certificate. And finally, the client performs explicit authentication. And server key exchange and client key exchange messages are used to establish its master secret. In the finished message, each segment confirms the transcript of, of their handshake. And we add one more message it's called extended finishes to deliver the security information to the client. And finally, the client performs security parameter verification. After the session establishment, the client and the server exchange the data with appending the modification log block, including the HMAX uh, over the input and output messages. So an endpoint performs valid modification checks to understand who sent the message and which middle boxes modify the message. To verify the security of the MA protocol, we implemented the protocol and the security goals by using a Tamarin, a state-of-the-art symbolic verification tool. The result shows that the MATRS protocol is secure in terms of our security goals, which is modeled in the first of the logic by a Tamarin. Now, and we also implemented the MATRS protocol by extending the OpenSSL to show the performance overhead incurred by the protocol. So we situated the client and the client side in our campus while the server and server, server side middle boxes are located in Korea and Japan and United States. So this is the result. So the ref chart shows HTTP load time, including a TRS handshake time and the HTTP message exchange. And the right chart demonstrates the data transfer time, including only the HTTP message exchange. So we compare the MATRS protocol with the split TRS protocol and the MCTRS protocol, which is one of the popular protocol in this community. So the MATRS protocol introduces a slight delay compared to split TLS and MCTLS. And interestingly, after the session establishment, three schemes show similar delay time for data transfer. So based on two observations, we conclude that MATRS overhead is mainly due to the setup of an MATRS session, which means that once the session is established, MATRS pro provides similar performance to the other while preserving all the security merits that we have discussed. Today, I have shown, the, shown you the split TRS is, protocol is risky, so we propose a notion of auditable middle boxes and the MATRS protocol based with the three audit mechanisms. And I hope this protocol helps the endpoint to securely introduce middle boxes while guaranteeing the end-to-end -end security between the server and the client. And this is the end of my presentation, and thank you very much for your attention. And you can find my uh, summary of the paper in the project web page and the source code in the Git repository. And I shall do my best to answer if you have any uh, questions, and thank you. Hi, my name is Barry Lieber. I have, um, th this looks like it 
It's a reasonably good idea as far as it goes. It's okay, yeah. uh, intended for well-behaved middle boxes, right? Um, you want to put up a, a caching mm -hmm. proxy somewhere. Yeah. Ill-behaved middle boxes, middle boxes that want to do bad things or want to hide, can mimic this protocol, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that the client sees this protocol happening does not assure the client that the right thing is going on. So that I just want to make, point that out, that it's very possible for a bad, a bad guy to make you think this protocol is in effect and everything is secure mm -hmm. when it's not. So, um, so let me confirm your question again. So you're talking about if the middle box performs maliciously, I mean the software in the middle right, box right. is maliciously. Right, suppose the middle box does the old split TLS thing mm -hmm. with fake certificates. Mm -hmm. It can do that mm -hmm. and make you think this protocol is what's happening. Um, it's, it sends okay. the right things. The client looks at it and says, oh, good, I have a well-behaved middle box in there. That's okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And doesn't realize that it's just the same as before. Yeah, okay. So, so for uh, some uh, malicious middle boxes, so... Um, uh, first of all, so we try to make the middle boxes visible, so to, um, to decrease the chance of the malicious behavior. So because the client or other any interested party can know uh, who who want to be a middle box. So I think it, is, it gives some kind of transparency to reduce the chance of the uh, malicious attacks. I think so. I think um, I'm not sure, but because but. Uh, I think the malicious software or malicious behavior should be um, defensed previously, I mean, before the introducing the middle box with the program analysis or other tools. And, but we focus on the protocol execution by the middle boxes in this work. But I'm not sure this well, well answered for your question, but yes. But main, I think main idea is making them visible and we want to guarantee the transparency. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Ahmed Sarush from Park. Uh -huh. So could you um, clarify, uh, elaborate a little bit on how you establish the accountability keys, um, uh -huh. the, the, the HMAC keys that you use? Uh, uh, for, so, uh, is that a multi-party, like Diffie-Hellman? Like, like, how, how uh, are yes, you establishing Yes, we use the Diffie-Hellman key exchange between... Is that the, pairwise or between yes. all, of, all the entities in the past? All the entities, I mean, the client with the, each middle boxes as well as the server. So in the first round trip, the client sends its own the DH key material, and the, each middle box is append its own key materials and send it to the forward it to the server. And also the server sends the, its own uh, DH key parameter to the client, appending the DH key parameter as well by the middle box. And by exchanging the all the uh, DH public key. I think every entity can make its own accountability HMAC keys. I mean, with the client and the middle box, and middle box with the server, and... Okay, okay. Right. thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much.